Welcome to the weekend edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that for over 50 years has been changing lives through God's unconditional love and grace. So here's the radical statement that having the Holy Spirit, having what we have today, having the Holy Spirit is better than having Jesus in his physical body here. And now, here's Andrew. Now I'm going to start with a radical statement that if I was just to make this on my own, I believe that probably most of the people, even here, even though you're the fanatics or drug hereby fanatic, most of you would think this is wrong. You're wrong. Matter of fact, some people will be offended by this. But I'm going to read it to you out of Scripture. I'm not the one who said this. Jesus is the one who said it. And so hopefully you won't uh, discount it if Jesus is the one who said it. But here in John chapter 16, this is the night before his crucifixion. And Jesus was speaking to his disciples and he had just told them that he was going to go to the Father. He was going to be leaving them. And he says in John chapter 16, verse 5, But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Did you know if you were one of Jesus' disciples, and if you had been with him for three and a half years, and if you had, I mean, heard his teaching, he said things that nobody else had ever said. Think what it would have been like to be with Jesus and to hear him loving people, prostitutes that should have been put to death and yet he saved their life and they just instantly are converted. And Matthew, the tax collector who people hated him and despised him and he made Matthew one of his disciples and he just embraced people. He would go into the Pharisee's house he would deal, he would touch the lepers. He was just breaking all of the bondages. These people every day was just some kind of a miracle happening. And here he says, I'm going to leave and you aren't going to see me anymore. Man, that would have been disheartening. That would have been sad. And he says, because I've said these things, sorrow has filled your heart. But look at this in verse seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Anytime Jesus has to start what he's saying by saying, I'm telling you the truth, everything he said was the truth. And for him to have to preface what he's saying by this means that he was going to say something that was so radical that people would have thought maybe uh, he was misstating it or they were misunderstanding it. So he had to clarify and say, I'm telling you the truth. I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you. The word expedient means to your advantage. You're better off to have me leave so that the Holy Spirit can come. Because if I don't leave, the Holy Spirit can't come. So here's the radical statement that having the Holy Spirit, having what we have today, having the Holy Spirit is better than having Jesus in his physical body here. I'm not trying to take anything away from Jesus' personal ministry. Not at all. But most of us don't value the ministry of the Holy Spirit as much as we value the ministry of Jesus. Most of us, if we had to choose between what we've got right now and somebody says, what would, you know, what, which would you rather have? What we have right now or would you rather have Jesus walk into this auditorium? Would you rather have Jesus in his physical body here tonight speaking to you and praying for people? I guarantee you the vast majority of people would say in a heartbeat, I want Jesus in his physical body. And Jesus is saying what we have here tonight is better than having Jesus in his physical body here. And again, most people, if I hadn't have worked up to this and have conditioned you for it, most of you would say, man, I'd give anything to have Jesus here in his physical body ministering to me tonight. But Jesus said it's better to have the Holy Spirit with us than it is to have him with us. That's not to take anything away from Jesus, but it's to elevate and to magnify the ministry of the Holy Spirit. 
And so I believe that this is indication that most of us don't value the ministry of the Holy Spirit as much as Jesus did. Jesus says we're better off to have the Holy Spirit in us than to have Jesus with us. And yet if you don't think that way, it's because you haven't placed a proper value on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But I want to talk about 10 reasons that having the ministry of the Holy Spirit with us is actually better than having Jesus with us. That's an amazing fact. How in the world could you get anything better than the physical presence of Jesus? We just need to understand. And if you don't have understanding, you don't value something that you don't understand. And so uh, anyway, we're gonna just be talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and hopefully this will help you to place a value on this and to begin to start understanding and receiving. You have to mix the truth of God's word with faith. Hebrews chapter four, verse two says, the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Just for you to hear that, you know, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is actually better than having Jesus in his physical body with us. That's not gonna set you free unless you understand it and mix faith with it. And so I'm just praying that God will use this, that the Holy Spirit will quicken these things to you and uh, that this will make a difference. And praise God, if we, if we respond to the Holy Spirit, wouldn't it be awesome to think Jesus, having the Holy Spirit with us and in us is actually better than having the physical presence of Jesus. Man, if you could come to that conclusion by the end of this conference, that would be major. That would make a huge difference in your life. So the first thing I want to talk about is just real simple and it's really obvious that one of the reasons that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is actually better than having Jesus in his physical body is because when he was in his physical body, he could only be in one place at one time. And yet he said in uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse five, that I will never leave you nor forsake you. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. He says that I am not gonna leave you comfortless. I'm gonna send a comforter and then I will come and make my abode with you. Jesus now promises to be with every single one of us. Did you know if Jesus was here in his physical body, we might benefit corporately right now from the personal ministry of Jesus, but then we'd all have to go home. We'd have to go back our separate ways and you might've been touched by Jesus, but you wouldn't have him with you. But now through the Holy Spirit, Jesus now lives inside of us. And some people struggle because they can't see him because you can't feel him with just your physical feelings. You have to perceive these things by faith. But the scripture says in Galatians chapter four, verse six, that because we are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. You have the spirit of Christ in you. And again, many people, they may listen to this and they may just intellectually say, okay, well, I acknowledge that, but they, it's not a reality to them because they can't see Jesus. They can't feel him. Most people would throw the Bible on the floor to be able to see something rather than just read about it and mix faith with it. Most people are carnal and, and dominated by their feelings. But whether you feel it or not, God is with you. It says in Romans chapter eight, verse nine, that if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If there's anybody here saying, well, I don't believe that I have Jesus with me all of the time, well, then you aren't born again. And we'll give you an opportunity to solve that problem tonight. <laughs> you can accept Jesus. But the moment you get born again, God himself lives on the inside of you. Jesus comes and lives in you. So it's better to have Jesus living in you than it is to have Jesus with you in his physical body. Thank you for that thunderous silence. <laughs> Unlike Jim today, who was spitting out things so fast that it was impossible to digest it all. I'm giving you time to think about it, to let this soak in. You can chew this and swallow it and actually get something instead of just getting so much that you have to just throw up. 
I love Jim's ministry. It was awesome. But honestly, I just, I can't even listen as fast as he talked. <laughs> and there was no way I could digest it all. I'm going to have to go back and think over and over and over these things. But I want you to let this soak in. That it would be wonderful to experience Jesus in his physical body here tonight and to have him minister to you personally. But as great as that could be, as great as anything you could imagine that Jesus would do if he was here in his physical body, it is infinitely better to have Jesus living on the inside of you with you every second of every day for the rest of your life that he will never leave you or forsake you. Man, that is awesome. Jesus himself said, it's actually better to have the ministry of the Holy Spirit have me indwell you through the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm using Jesus and the Holy Spirit and for purposes of discussion, you can separate them. But the truth is they are one and God cannot function independent of other parts of the body. You know, when God created the heavens and the earth, the spirit of the Lord God moved upon the waters. And so God said, Jesus is the word. So God, the father spoke, Jesus, the word was released. And then the power of the Holy Spirit uh, brought it to pass. Jesus said, I can do nothing by myself. Jesus didn't perform any miracles until the Holy Spirit came upon him and anointed him. He didn't start his ministry. We've got so many people ministering independent of the Holy Spirit today. And this is one of the reasons that we have woke Christianity where they're actually sitting there and lamenting the Supreme Court, making a decision that spares the life of innocent children and talking about how terrible it is. And they're preaching this from the pulpit. That's not inspired by the Holy Spirit. We got people who are saying that they're Christians, but that there isn't any evidence of it in their life. And it's because they, it's not the Holy Spirit inspiring them. The Holy Spirit cannot operate independent of the other members of the Godhead. So when Jesus said, I can't do anything by myself, I've actually heard people before say that is a testimony to the fact that Jesus wasn't truly God because he's saying he couldn't do anything without the Father or without the Holy Spirit. It's exactly the opposite. It's showing the oneness between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that they cannot function independent of each other. We, we sit there and for the purpose of discussion, separate them. But in Deuteronomy chapter six, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. We don't serve three gods. We got one God. And I don't totally understand it, but he can manifest himself in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But they are one and they cannot operate independent of each other. So when you get the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is with you, you've got the Father and the Son with you. They never leave you nor forsake you. And again, we, are, we tend to be so carnal that if we can't see it, if we can't feel it, we don't believe it. If you could leave here saying that, man, just like Jesus said, if, or Paul's one that said this in Romans chapter eight, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Second Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new and all things are of God. If we could ever understand that God, we are God possessed. And it's not just when you're having a great praise and worship service and not just when you see something happen, but God indwells you at your worst time. If you don't feel the presence of God, if it looks like everything in your life is wrong and you say, God, where are you? It's your feelings that are wrong. The scripture teaches that God himself indwells us through the Holy Spirit. And if we could understand that it is better to have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit than it is to have Jesus in his physical body. Awesome. Man, how would this change your life? You know, I don't claim to have totally understood this, but I understand it to the degree that since I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I have never, ever, ever been lonely. I cannot even comprehend the feeling of loneliness. And I went through 13 months in Vietnam and I was the only Christian that I knew outside of the ones that I led to the Lord. And I was treated like the plague. And I had people ridicule me and 
do things. And yet I never felt lonely because I had this awareness that God indwelt me. I can't even conceive being lonely. I love the corporate anointing and I enjoy being here. This is one of the favorite times of my life is to be here with other believers and people that I love and receive benefit from them. But I guarantee you, you could put me by myself, which I was for 13 months. Actually for 19 months, I went through basic and they treated me like the plague. I'd go sit down at a table during mess hall and everybody would pick up their stuff and move. I went eight weeks and not one single person would say a word to me because I witnessed to them all and they treated me like the plague. They used to call me preacher in basic and they would have three classes a day and they, the drill sergeant would have me stand at attention and then have somebody come up and talk about the prostitute that they went into over the weekend on their leave and talk about how they raped a girl or they'd come up and tell the dirtiest joke that they could tell and he'd make me stand at attention while they did all of this stuff. And he'd say, you hate me, don't you preacher? And I'd say, no, sir, I'm praying for you. And you know, it worked out for good because I got to talk to a lot of people and lead them to the Lord through that. But I mean, I was ridiculed. I was treated like the plague. I didn't have a lot of wisdom. I was kind of like what Jim was talking about today. Man, I had a lot of zeal, but not a lot of knowledge. And I just, uh, anyway, I can spend a lot of time explaining. There's probably reasons why they treated me the way they did, but nonetheless, I was by myself. And I mean, the very first night in, in, in the army, they took us and shaved our head, shipped us to El Paso, Texas, put us in this room with, uh, I think there was a hundred and some other people in the deal and they turned out the lights and people were just cussing and blaspheming God. And I just quote a scripture, God will not hold him guiltless. It takes his name in vain. <laughs> And they'd say, who said that? And I'd just shut up. <laughs> and then they'd start talking, well, you know, and they'd say something and I'd say, Galatians 4, 16, am I become your enemy because I tell you the truth. <laughs> and then they said, turn the lights on. Who said that? And I'd just lay there. And go, <laughs> so anyway, I didn't use maybe as much wisdom as I should, but... So my point is I've been alone. I've been separated. I've been shunned. And yet I never, ever, ever felt alone because I'm aware that the Holy Spirit is in me. And I don't have a full understanding of everything, but this, I can't understand a person being, I can't understand a person being lonely or being depressed. I can nearly understand depression because I've been tempted with it when everything looks bad, but because I'm aware of the Holy Spirit being with me and he's the comforter, I'm going to talk. That's another reason I'm going to talk about. I'm kind of mixing all these things together, but uh, because of that, man, I haven't been depressed and discouraged in 54 years. And I've had a lot of depressing things happen. I had my son die and I was tempted to be depressed and I just chose to say, Father, I'd refuse. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to grieve. I refuse to do this because I knew that God was with me. We need a revelation of God with us. Luke chapter 24, Jesus was raised from the dead and the resurrected Jesus was walking with two disciples on the road to Emmaus, seven miles, probably two hours, two and a half hours walk. And he joined with them and they were sad. And here they were talking to Jesus. They were sad because they had heard the reports that Jesus was raised from the dead, but they were having a hard time believing it. They saw him crucified. They buried him. He'd been dead for three days and they were struggling to believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. And here was Jesus walking with them. If they would have known who was with them, their sadness would have been turned into joy, but they were sad. They were depressed because they didn't know who was with them. And when their eyes were finally open and they recognized him, immediately the depression was gone. Immediately all of the fears were gone. They ran back to Jerusalem and told the others and they said, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us, by the way. Having Jesus inside of you is even better than having Jesus walking with you for two and a half hours. 
Jesus indwells us. If we got a revelation of that, I believe that we would elevate the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit to a point that it wouldn't diminish what Jesus did in his physical body, but it would elevate what the Holy Spirit has done. And I guarantee you, it would do, it would do awesome things in your life. The Lord used those verses in Luke 24, I mean, back 40 something years ago and just impressed on me. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Even when you don't see me, when you don't understand that I'm with you, I'm with you. And I, I believe that. I believe Jesus has never left me. That's the reason the song they were singing tonight about he's been faithful all my life. He's been faithful. Man, that just rings my bell. I believe that even when I haven't seen it and it doesn't look like it, God is faithful. God has never left us. If we were to celebrate that, if we just spent all night talking about this one thing, and if you got a revelation of this, it would transform your life. Learn how to live a life full of God's power when you get Andrew's brand new teaching title, 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit. I'd like to remind you once again that I'm offering this little booklet entitled 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit, and I'm offering this as a free gift to you. Our announcer is going to give you all the details, but I promise you this is something that you need to truly value the ministry of the Holy Spirit and receive the full benefits. So call or write and request this free booklet today. As a special offer, Andrew is giving away his booklet, 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit as his gift to you, absolutely free. This offer is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. 10 Reasons It's Better to Have the Holy Spirit is also available in a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast, or as a DVD album recorded live at a ministry event. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software, the Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. Jesus had talked about out of your belly will flow rivers of living waters that they that believed on him would receive. And it says, this spake he of the spirit which they would receive because Jesus wasn't glorified yet. Therefore, the Holy Spirit couldn't be given yet. So until Jesus was resurrected and glorified, the Holy Spirit couldn't come. Now that Jesus is gone, now that he is at the right hand of God the Father, he said, I will send the Holy Spirit. This is one of the reasons that we know that Jesus made it because he sent back the Holy Spirit. He promised that when he made it, he would send the Holy Spirit. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and that's just like, I promised you, I told you it had happened. So now we know that he's seated at the right hand of God the Father because the Holy Spirit is with us. And so until Jesus was glorified, you could not be born again. Did you know that the disciples were not born again while Jesus was with them? They didn't have a heart to receive. Uh, Moses said this in the Old Testament. God was speaking through Moses and he said, oh, that there was in them a heart 
to receive. The Lord did all of these miracles for him, and yet three days into the desert, they were griping and complaining. He had done the 10 plagues. He had parted the Red Sea. And three days after going through the Red Sea and seeing all of the Egyptians destroyed, they were without water and they said, can God perform a miracle? Can God provide for us? And the Lord was so grieved saying, man, what does it take for these people to recognize what I'm capable of? They just didn't have a heart. And he said, oh, that they had a heart to receive. When you get born again, God gives you a new heart. You are born of God. Let me read these verses to you out of John chapter three. This is Jesus speaking when uh, Nicodemus came to him. And Jesus said unto Nicodemus in John three, three, Jesus answered and said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You know, this born again has nearly become a cliche today and people don't really think about it. The words literally mean unless you're born from above. We were born of this earth, but you have to have a heavenly birth. You have to be born from above. And unless you are born again, you can't even see, much less enter into the kingdom of God. Did you know that because Jesus is now gone, we are born again? That is awesome. And we could spend again all night or all week talking about what it means to be born again. But in Romans chapter six, and I hadn't got time to teach on this, I'm gonna say some things here that are contrary to most religious people's belief. But if you read Romans chapter six, the old man is dead and he does not resurrect every morning. You do not have an old sinful nature. And most Christians believe that you do. Matter of fact, most Christians are taught that you got a dual nature, that you're actually schizophrenic, that there's part of you that's born of God, but you've also got this old nature and that you're an old sinner saved by grace. That's not what the word of God teaches. You were an old sinner, but you got saved by grace. And Romans chapter six teaches that your old nature is gone. And some people just by observation think my old nature's not gone. I can sin as good as I ever did. I have some of the same temptations. I have some of the same problems. And by observation, they think, no, I've still got this propensity for sin. But it's not your nature that is driving you to sin as a Christian. It's an unrenewed mind. Your sinful nature, the part of you that was dead in trespasses and sins, and Ephesians chapter two, verses two and three says, you were by nature a child of the devil, child of wrath, even as others. You had a nature that made you sin. It was not your sins that made you a sinner. It was your sin nature that made you sin. But when you get born again, God takes that sinful nature out of you and you don't have anything now that compels you to sin. The only reason you sin is because we haven't renewed our mind. Our mind is like a computer. And this sinful nature that we had taught us to lust, taught us to be selfish, taught us to do these things. When you get born again, you are born from above and you do not have a sinful nature. Again, Romans chapter six says that multiple times. And some people think, well, yes, I died, but every morning I have to die to myself again. Romans chapter six says, as Jesus died unto sin once, even so, reckon you yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God. Jesus only died unto sin once, never to die again. You do not have to die to your sinful nature over and over and over. And if you think that you do, then what you're doing is constantly identifying with failure, constantly identifying with sin, and it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you still see yourself as an adulterer, as a drug addict, as a doper, as a whoremonger or whatever, and you're just, you're forgiven, but that's your nature. Then you'll only resist to a degree. And after the temptation persists, you'll give in thinking, well, this is who I am. I'm not an old sinner that was saved by grace. I was an old sinner, but I got saved by grace. And now I am a brand new person. I am the righteousness of God. So because Jesus is now at the right hand of God, the father, and because the Holy Spirit is given, the Holy Spirit has 
we are born from above and we no longer have a sinful nature. All we've got is an unrenewed mind. Romans chapter 12, verse two says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The way you get transformed isn't by prayer. It isn't by begging. It isn't by having people lay hands on you. It's by renewing your mind. Your spirit is perfect. Your spirit's as perfect as it will ever be in eternity. One third of your salvation is over. The problem is that we've got an unrenewed mind. As quickly as you can begin to start thinking, you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So one of the benefits of Jesus now being gone and the Holy Spirit being in us is your nature has been changed. You are now, part of you is God. You aren't God, but your born again spirit was born of God. And it says in 1 uh, Corinthians 6, 17, he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. The Greek word is hes, H-E-I-S. It means a singular one to the exclusion of another. Your spirit isn't similar to God. It's not like God's here and here you are. You're a baby spirit down here. No, your spirit is identical to Jesus as he is. So are you in this world. First John chapter four, verse 17 says that herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is Jesus, so are we in this world. Not so are we going to be in the next world, but so are we in this world. Your spirit is, is identical to Jesus because it is the spirit of Jesus that is sent into your heart, crying, Abba, Father, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. You now are God possessed and one third of you is as holy and righteous and pure as Jesus is. And the rest of the Christian life is starting to live from your spirit instead of from your brain and your feelings and your emotions. And if you say, well, I just don't feel this. That's the problem. You're in the flesh. You're going by your feelings. Start going by the word. The Bible says, Jesus said this in John 6, 63. It's the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. How do you know what's going on in the spirit? You can't feel the spirit. We say that we can, but the truth is you can feel the anointing. You can feel faith. You can't feel the spirit. I hadn't got time to explain that, but you can't feel the spirit. You can't see the spirit. You can't hear the spirit with your physical ears and things like this. You have to perceive him through the word. The word is a spiritual mirror is what it says in James chapter one. You look into the perfect law of liberty and you see your spirit man. So because people can't feel the things that I'm talking about. People just think, man, I wish Jesus was here. He is here, but he's here in the spirit and you can only contact him. If you're going to worship him, John chapter four, verse 24, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, in spirit, not in feeling, not in emotions. You know, I have feelings. Some people don't think I do. They give me a hard time about this, but I have feelings. And I mean, I, I get emotional. I cry easily, but I just choose what I cry about. If I don't like it, I don't allow it. But if it's good, man, I can, I can be touched emotionally as much as anybody else. I've got emotions, but I don't let my emotions dominate me. So if I don't feel like God is with me, I'm wrong. Because God said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. If I don't feel like I have joy, I'm wrong. Because the Bible says the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. If I don't feel love for somebody, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to go ahead and act in love. I'm going to act on what God's word says, regardless of what I feel. That's being born of God in the spirit You've got everything that you'll ever need. You don't need to get more. You don't need to ask God for more. You are born from above. This is one of the benefits. Your whole nature has been changed. The disciples' nature wasn't changed. This is the reason that they were called disciples. <laughs> they were dumber than a bag of rocks. Over here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 
And I'm not coming to you in excellency of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power. He determined not to speak to people in just human wisdom, but he was going to speak the word of God and let the Holy Spirit bear witness. And then he says in verse nine, he, he quoted an Old Testament passage and he says, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And people will take that verse right there and they'll write songs about further along, we'll know all about it. Further along, we'll understand why. In the sweet by and by. And they just enshrine that as we just can't know the things of God. God's ways are a mystery. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Well, that's true if you're talking about just your carnal, natural self. But the very next verse, verse 10, you got to read scriptures in context. If you take the text out of the context, all you got left is a con. <laughs> so in verse 10, it says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. This isn't saying you can't know the things of God. It's just saying with your brain, you can't know the things of God. The Bible isn't written to your brain. The Bible is written to your heart. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, Romans 10, 10. God wrote the word to your heart. The word of God does make sense, but it's not carnal sense. Carnal sense says if you need something, then hoard what you've got. Don't give anything away, keep it. Uh, but the Bible says, if you need something, give, open up. It makes perfect sense, but it's not the sense of this world. And he said these exact things right here in 1 Corinthians chapter two. We're speaking the wisdom of God, but it's not the wisdom of the world. If the world would have understood true wisdom, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. They played right into the hands of God. They did exactly what God sent Jesus to do. They crucified him and made him a sacrifice. The lost people don't know God. When we're born again, the Holy Spirit will take the things of God and reveal them unto us. But it says the uh, natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So a natural man is not limited to being a lost man. A lost man is a natural man. They're just natural. But even a Christian if you are operating from only your wisdom and you're going by what you see, taste, hear, smell, and feel, and you're letting emotions dominate you, then you're operating as a natural man. So this is just talking about a person without the influence of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to reveal spiritual truth to you. And this is one of the greatest benefits of having the Holy Spirit is that now the one who wrote scripture, it says, holy man of God, wrote as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. It says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. The Greek word for that means it was God breathed. The Bible isn't people writing about God, therefore subject to error. The word of God is God speaking through people supernaturally. And every word of this Bible is inspired by God. The Holy Spirit inspired it. He's the one who wrote it. So if you receive the Holy Spirit and it has to be done by faith, but if you will mix faith with it, the one who wrote the word will explain it to you. Yes. You know, I went to a man's church in Shreveport, Louisiana for 20 years. And this guy had three or four doctor's degrees and he was really into education. And he had, he could speak fluently Hebrew and Greek. And he was always ragging on me. You need to go get an education. And you need to start doing this. And um, I mean, we were friends, but he was, he, every time we got together, he'd be talking about that. But then I'd get up and minister and he would take, I'd stay at his home and he would take me and he says, how did you get this? Where did you learn this? He says, I went to college. I went to seminary and I learned these things. And you're saying things that you don't know. How did you get this? Where did you get it from? And I'd sit there and explain it. And after a few years of doing this, he got to where he finally understood and embraced it. But at first he was highly offended that he had spent a lot of money and been to cemetery. I mean, seminary for, <laughs> for a decade. And 
I was saying things that he didn't know and the things that he did know, I knew them by the Spirit instead of knowing it by man teaching me. And it really offended him that I do this. It says, I have more understanding than all of my teachers for your word is my meditation day and night. Did you know if you would take the word of God and understand that the Holy Spirit is sent to reveal scripture to you, to reveal truth to you. And if you were to by faith appropriate that, everything works through faith, you would start having your understanding quicker. You'd see things differently. But sad to say, the vast majority of Christians are leaning under their own understanding. They're trying to figure things out. They're looking at what's happening in our world and thinking, is this right? And man, all it takes is, just, I mean, if you know just a little bit of scripture, you can tell that so much of the stuff that's being crammed down our throats today is total lies. The Holy Spirit will show you these things. You know, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit March the 23rd, 1968. I didn't speak in tongues then because I was a Baptist and I'd been taught that that was of the devil and God doesn't force you to speak in tongues. But I mean, I was overwhelmed with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it took me a while to get beyond my Baptist doctrine and get my questions answered. But uh, eventually I did speak in tongues. I speak in tongues all the time now. But I didn't speak in tongues right then, but I guarantee you, I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Somebody said, well, you can't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit without speaking in tongues. I'm not speaking in tongues right now and I'm baptizing in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You have a choice whether you speak. And I was taught so much wrong stuff about it that I just didn't speak. But anyway, my point is that when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I had read the Bible every day of my life since I learned to read. I never missed a daily Bible reading. I read through the Bible multiple times before I was 18 years old. But man, when I received this baptism of the Holy Spirit, I couldn't open the Bible without God just screaming at me. I mean, the Word of God came alive. I couldn't read more than a verse or two before I just was ready to run and go do something. The Word of God came alive to me. It's just like those disciples on the road to Damascus when their eyes were finally opened. They said, did not our heart burn within us? while he talked to us and opened up the scriptures. I know many of you know what I'm talking about, but there's some people in here that probably have never had the word of God just come alive, had the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. You know, Jamie and I are blessed to have our son raised from the dead. We have seen people's lives change. I've seen blind eyes open. We've seen God supply needs. We've seen God flow through us. But I've had people ask, what's the greatest thing you've ever seen God do? Without any reservation, it's a word from scripture coming alive to me. It burns on the inside of you. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse nine, Jeremiah was preaching and people were rejecting him so much. He says, I'm not gonna preach anymore in the name of the Lord because he was just tired of being persecuted. And he says, but his word was like fire shut up in my bones. I couldn't forbear. I had to speak. I can tell you, out of all of the miracles that I've seen, the great things, the greatest experience in my life is the Holy Spirit making the Word of God come alive and give me understanding. To all of a sudden have something that is just beyond your comprehension. God, what does this mean? And the Holy Spirit just reveals things to you. I'd say that's the greatest experience I've ever had. And I've had that experience thousands of times. I've had times that I've taken my doctrine that I was taught with, and then I'm studying the word and it's just totally different. And I say, God, which one is right? And I pray and the Holy Spirit just reveals things to me that in the natural, I couldn't have ever gotten it. To have God Almighty speak to you through the Holy Spirit did you know Jesus, in a, to a degree he did that because the Holy Spirit would bear witness to his words and help people, but because they weren't born again, they were the natural man and they couldn't understand the things of the Spirit of God. Jesus prophesied 14 different times that he would be crucified 
And half of those times, seven, he said, not only will I be crucified, but I will rise again. And a couple of times he even said it was on the third day. He explained all of this stuff. And you know, it was amazing. The Pharisees remembered it. And they went to Herod and said, this deceiver said that he was going to be raised from the dead. They remembered it and they were afraid that somebody had come steal away the body and therefore say he was raised from the dead. But Jesus' own disciples, they didn't remember it. They ne it never crossed their mind. They forgot all of these things. You know why? Because they weren't born again. The Holy Spirit wasn't in them. And the Holy Spirit is sent to reveal truth and to reveal Jesus. In John chapter 14, verse 26, the same night that he taught them that, you know, it's better for you that I go away. That same night, he said in John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, when he has come, will teach you all things and lead you into all truth and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I've spoken unto you. The job of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus to you and reveal truth to you. I was teaching on essential things for leadership. And anyway, I was going through a lot of different things, but I was telling them that honestly, I don't have the things like John Maxwell was here last year. I loved his teaching. People love what John Maxwell teaches, but I haven't followed any of those steps. I haven't done anything that anybody else teaches. And when I hear them teach it, I think, man, that's really good. I wish I'd done that. <laughs> and yet I'm a leader and God uses me to touch people. But you know how it happens? Because man, I love God. I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit shows me things, reveals things to me that are beyond myself. I didn't learn this through somebody's steps of how to do things. The Holy Spirit will speak to you and all you have to do is just obey. So basically I was teaching that all it takes to be a leader is to have an intimate relationship with God. And that intimate relationship will produce humility. It will produce character. It will produce you hearing the voice of God. It will cause you to obey. It will cause you to do all of these different things. And the Holy Spirit will just make you look good. The Holy Spirit, if we can understand that when he's come, his job is to reveal Jesus to you, to reveal truth to you, to lead you into all truth. If you really understood that and every day when you face a problem, instead of you leaning under your own understanding, instead of you staying up over, uh, at night worrying, God, what am I going to do? I'm saying this in love, but if you can't sleep at night because you're trying to work things out, you haven't cast your care over on the Lord. You know, Charlie and Jill, they sang about this tonight. We cast our care and we leave it there. There's some people that'll say, oh God, I got this problem. I'm casting my care on you. And then you'll stay up all night long trying to figure out how to do it. You took it all back. If you truly cast your care on the Lord, then you don't have it. You're trying to work things out in your own instead of just letting the Holy Spirit reveal things to you. We don't depend upon the Holy Spirit near as much as he would like us to. God wants us to rely upon him. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says, You see your calling, brethren, and not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the weak things of the world, base things of the world, things that are despised, things that are nothing to bring to naught, things that are. And the reason he did this was so that no flesh with glory in his presence. God doesn't choose the cream of the crop. He's not against the cream of the crop, but it's just the fact that the cream of the crop will say, God, I just need a little help. You introduce me, you get me on stage and I can handle it from here. No wonder you chose me. What a great choice. I am, I am the perfect person to do this. The moment you think that way, you stop the flow of God's spirit. But people that don't have anything going for them, it makes them rely upon God. It makes them dependent upon God and they cry out and the Holy Spirit will speak to you and the Holy Spirit will flow through you. But very few of us really depend upon the Holy Spirit. We depend upon ourselves. We depend upon the world's system of finance. We depend upon the world's system of getting well. We depend upon the world's system of 
how to do politics and on and on instead of doing it God's way. And we just lean under our own understanding. When we have the comforter, the Holy Spirit that is sent to teach us all things and we aren't drawing on it. I can guarantee you that every person in here at one time or another has faced a problem. You prayed about it, but then ultimately you wound up doing it your way. And how did that work out? I bet you every person in here could say, man, I've, I knew God wanted me to go this way. And yet I did this because it just looked like wisdom. It's what everybody else told me to do. And it winds up failing. And when it does, you say, I knew I wasn't supposed to do that. That was the Holy Spirit giving you wisdom. And yet you did it your way. Would to God that we didn't have that self will so that if the Lord just says jump, you just say how high. You don't argue with him. I have people come to me all the time and say, God told me to come to Karis Bible College, but, and then they list all the reasons that they can't do it. And they'll say, so what do you think? And I said, you lost me the moment you said, God told you to come to Karis Bible College. If the Holy Spirit inspired you to do it, just do it. Well, what about this? Who cares about anything else? Man, you aren't depending upon the Holy Spirit. We don't value the Holy Spirit. All of these things that we're talking about, these aren't things that could happen if we would dot every I and cross every T and live a perfect holy life. These are things that have happened. You now are possessed by the Holy Spirit. You have been born again. Your old nature is gone and you've got a totally brand new person and the Holy Spirit is constantly teaching you and speaking to you. But you have a choice whether you're going to cooperate, whether you will mix it with faith or not. And I'm just telling you that the key to victory in the Christian life is just running up a white flag and saying, God, I'm you know, it says in uh, Jeremiah 10, 23, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walks to direct his own steps. You aren't smart enough to run your own life. God gives you the choice. You, he won't force you to do anything, but the right choice is to say, Oh God, I know that the way of man is not in himself. I'm not created to operate independent of you. I need to be 100% dependent. I need to not have a will of my own. I need to not have my own vision and ask you to bless it. But God, I just recognize that your Holy Spirit is sent to lead me, to guide me, to show me these things. And I just submit to you. I've only talked about three things and I've only talked about them briefly. But did you know these three things I've talked about tonight? I think every one of us in here could yield to the Holy Spirit, could value the ministry of the Holy Spirit much, much, much more than we do. And if you only took these three things that we've talked about tonight, and if you were to operate in this and let the Holy Spirit expand on this and get to where you're conscious that Jesus is with you every second of every day, I guarantee you it'd make a difference in the things that you watch, in the things that you do, in the things that you read, in the way you treat other people. If you understood that your old sin nature was gone, you wouldn't bear the shame and the disgrace and you wouldn't limit yourself thinking, how could God ever use me? Because you're a brand new person. And you would start drawing on this wisdom of the Holy Spirit. You'd fall in love with the Word of God and let the Word of God come alive to where it burns in your heart. And it would just transform you. These three little things I've talked about tonight are powerful. And I tell you that none of us have fully drawn on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I think that the world has never seen a person outside of Jesus who drew on the ministry of the Holy Spirit completely. We do it in part and most of us only do it in spurts. We'll get serious and draw on the Holy Spirit for a brief period of time, but you know, the scripture says the just live by faith. They don't visit there. It's not where they vacation. They don't go there on weekends. This is where they live. We should live in these things. This ought to be the way that we live. And I'd really like to encourage all of us here to just start appreciating 
the ministry of the Holy Spirit, not depreciate what Jesus did in his physical body. Without what he did, there would be no Holy Spirit given. There would be no new birth. There'd be none of these things. I'm not diminishing Jesus at all, but I'm saying having Jesus in us through the Holy Spirit is better than having Jesus with us in his physical body. And if we could really understand this and start walking in it, it would not only transform your life, but man, it would transform other people. Andrew has many conferences and seminars around the globe each year. For the latest information on Andrew's complete speaking schedule, visit our website at awmi.net slash events. Thank you for watching the weekend edition of Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack. We hope you've been blessed by today's teaching. You can get the products on today's teaching as well as many other valuable resources when you visit our website at awmi.net. For over 20 years, Karis Bible College has been training and empowering students to know who they are in Christ and step into their God-given calling and purpose. Not only do we have our main campus in Woodland Park, Colorado, we also have extension schools in several locations all around the world. You can also participate in Keras Online through our distance education courses. If you're interested in attending Keras Bible College, visit kerasbiblecollege.org to find a campus near you to discover all the ways you can attend Keras Bible College. If you're unable to attend Keras Bible College at one of these locations, we encourage you to consider enrolling in eKeras. eKeras has the entire first year curriculum preloaded onto an iPad. You can watch over 312 hours of teaching from Keras Bible College instructors anywhere at any time. No internet connection is required. To learn more about becoming a student through eKeras, contact us today. Andrew Womack Ministries has several offices in Karis Bible College locations around the world. To find a location near you, visit our website at awmi.net and click Contact Us. Our helpline is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. If you haven't yet partnered with us, I'd like to encourage you to pray about it. And then if the Lord says so, join with us because we are taking the gospel not only through television, but we've got over 70 uh, different locations around the world, offices, I think in 16 different nations. Uh, we have uh, probably 8,000 students going through Karis Bible College at any time with over 8,000 graduates. We're pumping out millions and millions of free material through our website, over 200,000 free hours of material on our website. And we're just reaching all around the world. We couldn't do it without partners. And so I would like to ask you to pray about it. If you want to make a difference, I believe that this is a good ministry. You'll get a great return, not only in heaven, but in this life, you'll receive a hundredfold. So join with us and become a partner with Andrew Womack Ministries today.